Hey, what's happening, guys? Look what Miniware sent me. It's their DS213 Mini Oscilloscope. 15 megahertz bandwidth on two channels. 100 mega samples a second. So, not a whole lot. Two analog. Those would be your top two 15 megahertz channels. And two digital channels down here. And these, I believe, are only one megahertz. One signal out. That means it has some sort of a built-in uh, signal generator. Patrick includes the oscilloscope, a USB cable, and one 1x10 one probe. Okay. That's really nice printing on that box. The whole box is a matte finish except for the oscilloscope. I'm like, is that a, is that a sticker? No. It's really nice printing. So here's the device itself, and as you can see, it is petite. We are talking about 100 millimeters long. Maybe 60 wide. About... 110 thick. I'm sorry. About 10 millimeters thick. Yeah. So we have channel C, channel D on the right side along with a uh, USB micro and a power switch. On the left side we have channel A, channel B, and out. On the top we have a play, pause, a stop, a circle, and a diamond, and encoder wheels we got a manual and we got little pushing SMA type probes those are interesting okay There's no probe compensation on these. That's interesting. So there's two of those. A small Allen key. A couple probe tick covers and color dinghies. And warranty card. There's another one there. So the manual itself is like a poster. Do do do, do 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 do. All right, well, let's uh, let's fire it up. So we'll go channel A, right? Oh, I hate this connector. Look at that. Look at the play. Are they supposed to go in all the way? Yeah. Okay. Much better. Still don't like the connector. All right, turn it on. FPGA configuration. Okay, it says. So what am I doing with this here? Okay, so that's changing my uh, volts per division. And this is changing my selection. Okay, interesting. Let's hook it up to a signal. This is a uh, 10 kilohertz sine wave here. I think the biggest problem that you're going to find with any miniaturized device is uh, how do you translate all of the controls that we're used to using on a full-size device onto a small handheld device. And then they try and pack as much into it as they possibly can, you know, to appeal to as many people as they can. Whoops, sorry, I'm going to bump the camera. So the way this thing works 
is we have two uh, rotary encoders here. Now this one B, let me uh, get this down here and adjust the focus so you folks can see better, maybe. There we go. Okay, so we rolled the B encoder, and that takes us across our menus, as you can see. Now, when we roll the A encoder, that is our selection. So I'm going to put a 1 megahertz square wave on here. And you can see down here in our frequency counter, blue, that means channel 1. Channel 1 peak to peak is... <laughs> I'm outputting uh, 5 volts peak to peak. Oops, keep bumping the dog on camera. So we are at times 10. So where are we where do we need to go to adjust that? Again, this is the problem with, with a small unit, but once you get used to it, you know what you're doing. Okay. So under A. Okay, so if I go to AC, we have It's locked at 10x. Yeah, they're locked on 10 times. So, if that's the case, why am I only seeing less than a volt peak to peak? When you can clearly see, I am outputting 5 volts peak to peak. All right, let's try this with a sine wave. Yeah, it's still. So this is my channel right here. You can see I can address the... Uh, voltage per division then come up here now we're in DC here AC DC times 10 okay there it is DC times 10 so that's how you adjust the probe AC DC times 10 ground state DC, AC, DC times 10. There we go. So now we're getting better. All right, let's go back and try that with the square wave once again. Now, there's no compensation adjustments on this probe that I can find. Perhaps I'm wrong. I don't think I am. Let's shed some more light on the subject. All right, so here's our probe. I see absolutely nowhere to adjust. And I can't use another probe because of these little SMA push-in connections. Interesting. So if we look at the parameters here, it's got a 1,000 milliamp battery, external micro USB port storage, 8 megabyte U disk storage, dimensions, our performance parameters, maximum sampling rate again, 100, 100 million samples per second, analog bandwidth 15 megs, yeah, we're going to take a look at that, analog input impedance 1 meg, coupling AC DC, maximum voltage. Plus minus 400 volts with a 10x probe. That's, I don't know, it seems a little high to me for this. Horizontal sensibility, 100 uh, nanoseconds per division. Vertical sensibility, oh, 10 millivolts per division. I would have liked to have seen that down to like a 1 millivolt per division. Oh my. Okay. 
So, let me shut the light off here. All right, let me get down here. Maybe we can get you a better view that is not all messed up by light shining all over the place. Okay. So, let's take this up to, we're at one megahertz. Let's go to five. This is one third. of the uh, maximum bandwidth. So I've rolled down here so I'm in my horizontal settings and now I can come down here and I can adjust my horizontal settings. So we're seeing 5 megahertz so it is reading the frequency correctly. It's much closer on the peak to peak. Well, no, it's not. But those waves look awful. And if I take it up to the 15 megahertz Yeah, that's as, that's as zoomed in as I can get. Yeah. Let's go back down to 1 megahertz. All right, let's see what we do about the trigger. All right, so if we come down here to our menu settings, they're under H. There are our trigger settings. So we have trigger modes, falling edge trigger, rising edge trigger, smaller than trigger, larger than trigger, negative pulse with smaller than trigger, negative pulse with larger than trigger, positive pulse with smaller than trigger, and ne yeah, negative pulse with smaller than trigger, larger than pulse with smaller than trigger. Okay. So there is our trigger setting they are not very intuitive as you can clearly see that looks like a falling edge there's a rising edge okay so then another good question always becomes how do we adjust our trigger and for that, it's this here, v, v, T, R, G, V trigger. And we should be able now to roll our trigger line down and up. So after a couple of minutes playing with this, the controls do become quite intuitive. They're not hard. There's no, um, no touchscreen action there. All right, now, so they have a menu button here. Let's find that menu button. This one? No, don't know what that one did, but that wasn't it. There's a menu button. So we have, we can save a BMP, save a wave, load a wave, save a CSV, volume. Is that LCD backlight? Let's see, can we roll down through here? Yeah. I'll see the backlight. I don't know, it doesn't seem to be that bright. Power down timer, five minutes. K3 confirm, I'm not sure what that is. Very interesting. So I think this is, all in all, a really cool piece of tech. It is compact. I don't have large hands, huge hands. I have average size hands, I guess. I wear a medium when it comes to uh, exam gloves. The screen is very reflective. The case is metal, like all the other stuff from anywhere. It is, it is solid. It is going to take me a bit of time to get to know this. But I will. And uh, we'll come back and visit it again in the future. 
So I would like to thank Miniware for sending this out to us free of charge for our consideration. And I'll put a link down below where you can check it out if you're interested. These are selling for about $179 on Amazon. And my take on that is if you need a small, compact oscilloscope, this might be what you're looking for. But if you have, you know, a desk with room and equipment, then a bench oscilloscope is probably going to do you better in the long run for the simple reason that this uses not proprietary connectors but connectors that are, are not standard for oscilloscopes so you're stuck with these probes which have no compensation I don't know like I said I like it it's very interesting so I'm happy to share that with you guys today and if you liked it I certainly hope that you'll give me a thumbs up and feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons who keep this channel going. If it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be here. So, thank you all so very, very much. And a special thanks to Dr. Quincy. That's it. I'm out. Peace.